expect this video to be worthwhile if you are thinking about being a good liberal one day or if you want to get better. The life of liberal isn't easy, but you can't be afraid of it. On the contrary, it's better to know what's ahead of you and what you should know and be able to do. That's why I look at liberal from several angles from the position that you want to be the best liberal possible. I'll start with courage. A liberal has to be courageous, not afraid of the ball. It's a player who has to be used to taking hits. A liberal, on the other hand, doesn't give any punches, doesn't attack. He can't make points. That's why it's very challenging. The whole match, your opponents have been shooting at you, just waiting for you to make a mistake. You are under pressure. You are being hit hard by the opposite and the outside hitter attacks, which fortunately fly at least 6 meters. But what about the middle blockers attacks uh, when the coach tells you go to 3 meters uh, into diagonal and expect uh, Simon to hit you with his attack? That takes courage. Either you get shot down and you'll be glad you survived uh, or you defend his bomb and the whole world will be talking about you as a superman. You just have to be prepared for these situations and these hard attacks. Uh, you can't avoid them, you can't hide behind a block. You have to go bravely into open space and wait for some volleyball killer to hit you. Mentally strong is another quality every liberal needs. When I talk about uh, liberal not being uh, scared that they have to be ready for any attack, I need to mention the mental side as well. Every liberal must be mentally strong. You can decide a match with a good serve. Instead, opponent serves into you the whole match, uh, waiting for you to make a mistake. A mistake that you can't actually make up for. And then what happens uh, is that no one serves to you for the whole set. Your opponent has a tactic uh, based on that. They serve into the outside hitters around you. And then at the end of the set, uh, preferably at the crucial moment, they serve to you. You haven't touched the ball up to that point. Uh, you know about the tense situation and you still have to do your job and pass the ball where the setter needs it. Then again, you get two aces and don't defend the tip behind the block. The coach and the players expect you to make up for your hesitation early with a great save, uh, but all of a sudden no one's aiming the ball at you, no one's serving at you for 10 minutes. For all these situations, a liberal needs a great mental strength, strength and the ability to play not only when times are good, but also when times are bad or when not many balls are coming to you. Libero is also a second setter. Because the libero does not make points, he cannot be driving force of the team on attack or on or serve. It's necessary for him to help the team as much as possible in other actions. Ok, so if you can't attack, serve and block, the libero concentrates on receiving and defense. But it's not only about these classical roles uh, that the libero must perform. A libero should also be an excellent setter, able to set almost like a setter. Libero is the second setter of the team. If the setter is not on the court, the libero takes over his role. If the ball in the court is defended by the setter, again, there is a job for the libero to set that ball. Excellent liberos are setting in front of them, behind them, same with their underarm pass. Uh, well, the best liberos in the world will play a pipe or even make a quick set to the mini blocker. So don't forget in practice to drill the set. Of course, uh, you can set with overhead set uh, in the 3 meter zone, but otherwise you are not limited. Throw your own balls high, sideways and try to make the perfect high set to the outside hitter. Also, coaches shouldn't just drill you on defense and reception, but regularly include setting drills for you. You'll see it will pay off uh, not only for you, but the, for the whole team. It's good to have two excellent setters on each team during the game. You need to be full of energy. Libero should also be like a nuclear power plant that never runs out of juice. Every team needs energy and the Libero should be one of the players that is full of emotions after winning the ball. Even this quality can be learned and improved. Watch how Zhenya Grebenikov or Erik Shoji celebrates and helps their team. They are constantly full of positive energy, which they charge not only themselves but the whole team with. So already at practice, work on being seen on the court not only with your performances, but also being heard and charging other players. Libero is a ball vacuum cleaner. Libero must not be afraid of anything. If I were to compare Libero to the animal world, it would have bits of hyena in it. 
Not that it waits until the prey has no strength and then attacks together, but because it doesn't bother eating the leftovers. It eats everything. The libero is similar. He's such a vacuum cleaner going after every speck, not letting any ball fall to the ground. He takes falling the ball on the ground as his personal defeat, so he will do anything, skip advertisement, run after a loose ball, just to keep the ball from falling on the ground. A libero has no boundaries. Uh, he certainly has a defined position he plays in, usually in zone 5 or 6, but his home is the whole court and not just that. As soon as he sees the ball touch on the block, he goes for it. Uh, once his hitting teammate is blocked and the ball bounces back to their half of the court, he's the first one hungry to take it. His eyes and mind are always on the ball. Nothing surprises him. Let's jump to the advantages of playing at libero. Not to make the libero position an incredible task, the libero position has its advantages as well. First of all, a libero doesn't jump, he doesn't hurt his knees from jumping. He can get a sprain after landing from a meter high, the opponent's uh, blocker can't make him a sprain. The libero also doesn't attack, he doesn't need to attack hard. Consequently, a libero's shoulders tend to be in a completely different state than those of attacking player and you hardly see any libero's uh, fingers taped. Libero's may also use shoes uh, that belong in the hole, but they may not be the typical volleyball shoes uh, that hold the foot firmly and prevent injuries on impact from the jump. Libero can also play in softer or almost running shoes. Also, the volleyball life of a libero can be longer, but it depends on how he takes care of himself, how honestly he trains, uh, how he works out in the gym and stretches. But let's get back to what awaits every libero. The basic position a libero spends at match is in the squat. Enough speaking uh, poetics about what a relaxed uh, volleyball life a libero has. As you know, liberos tend to be smaller players. Uh, you don't see liberos over 2 meters in men's volleyball or over 6 feet in women's volleyball. Of course, uh, smaller players have advantages. Uh, they are faster, they have a lower center of gravity, they are more under the ball and can better defend hard serves and attacks. But if you look at the movement of a libero, you'll find out uh, that uh, he doesn't have an easy life. The libero is practically in squat position the entire match. He's waiting in a low position as his opponent prepares for a hard jump serve. He's in squatting position, uh, moving defensively as he waits for his opponent to attack. In a wide stance, almost squatting, he stands on the line in anticipation of a hard hit from the opposite from position 1. That's why the liberos in trainings do drills to strengthen their legs, uh, improve their reactions and speed up their feet and hands. You often see them in static positions with their backs uh, against the wall. It's their bread and butter to spend the match uh, squatting and ready to take off like leopards after any ball. A libero has to sacrifice. Liberos don't just uh, play for themselves, they don't just uh, perform individually, they help others. One of his qualities should be to sacrifice for his teammates. Not only does the libero fall and jump in the court after every ball, but he's also at the receiving end to help the attackers, uh, to throw himself into receptions that are sometimes not his. Imagine a jump serve flying between you and the outside hitter at 120 km an hour. The outside hitter thinks, uh, I'll pass that bomb uh, to 3 meters, uh, then I step back and expect a high set against a 3 block, and I hope I make it the point. The libero has uh, nothing to do immediately after the reception. He's uh, got to cover the outside hitter. If he doesn't uh, cover his attack and the subsequent block right under his feet, nothing really happens. Uh, also, the distance he has to move to get to the cover is a lot less than the distance waiting for the outside hitter. Therefore, the libero should not hesitate for a moment to die for a serve that flies between them. Sure, sometimes it will turn out to be an ace, uh, and no one wants bad numbers and aces received in the stats. But this is uh, where the libero needs to not look at uh, his numbers, uh, but sacrifice for the team. It probably won't make uh, for ideal reception, but the main goal on serve reception is not getting an ace. So when you are libero, don't allow your opponents to give you an ace. Go for the balls that are on the edge and fly between and you and the outside hitter. Libero is the chief in defense. Just as the middle blockers are the bosses at the net, agreeing uh, with other blockers what to block after each opponent's reception, the libero is the chief in the defense in field. The libero should know best uh, where the opponents are serving and where each player's attacks are going. And based on this uh, knowledge, uh, build the formation for reception, 
Is there a player on serve who has uh, given us two aces in a row? Are we going to pass the serve in four? The next float serve we pass in two. I'll take more than half the court. These are examples of decisions that are made by Libero when we are waiting to receive serve. In the field, the Libero thinks about where he would help the most. Sure, he can uh, go defend zone one often, but switching position in zone five or six is pretty common. Every team has a defensive strategy, a strategy that the coaches work on. If you are a Libero, take an interest in everything around that strategy. Be active in building a team defensive strategy. The Libero should play without fluctuation. As I said before, the life of a Libero is not easy. He can't attack, he doesn't score points. Rather, he comes under pressure that is not easy to get out of. Also, you may experience matches where you hardly touch the ball. The opponent doesn't serve to you. Almost no ball flies at you on defense. Or on the contrary, the opponent thinks uh, that you are the one to serve to, that you are the weakest link on the reception. Whether it's the former situation or the latter, a good libero should play without fluctuation. Whether five serves a game are flying at you or you just received your reception number 50 in the match, just like a setter can't have fluctuation because he touches every second ball, a libero should deliver a steady receiving performance. If you have fluctuations, uh, not only you will not feel comfortable, but more importantly, your opponent will take advantage of any opportunity to capitalize on it. Therefore, even if you don't have many balls coming at you, don't relax in your concentration on the reception. Prepare for every ball as if it were coming at you and imagine that you are receiving it perfectly. Libero must be ready for anything. It's similar when defending in the field. You go to the field uh, instead of the blocker, you are on the bench for a while, you are on the field for a while, it's not easy to keep the same focus all the time. It happens that you don't get any balls in the court for 10 minutes. And then, all of a sudden, in one rally, you have to jump five times for the ball. So be ready for everything. Don't give yourself a break in any situation on the court. Keep your eyes on the ball at all times. Watch the opponent's attackers and don't let anything surprise you. As I mentioned several times, the life of a libero is not easy. Don't expect uh, to become a great libero in one season. As with any other position, a libero must master many skills, be mentally strong, not lose focus and have other strengths. Keep working on yourself and the result in form of not only good performance will come. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.